Hello and welcome to the video. In this video I'll be comparing and talking about the variety of plastic fermenters and unitanks from the companies Keg Land and Keg King, who both howl from Australia. This selection is based on what I've been able to attain in my local market here in Scandinavia, including products I have purchased myself and some that I have on loan. I should stress that whilst this is not a complete list from either company, it does represent a good selection of what is on offer, but with some holes of course. During the video if there is a similar alternative then I will mention it to be fair to the manufacturer and will later on point out the differences which follow both ranges very conveniently for the purpose of this video. Before we get started, because this video contains products, here is my full disclosure declaration. Feel free to pause it now and read it in full, but to summarise, yes, I work in the homebrew industry, but my channel is totally private. It is not business related and like the company I actually work for is totally independent. I do not accept sponsorship on this channel. With that aside, let us begin with a quick drive-by look at these products side by side with each identified. As much as these look rather similar, there are differences to each, and differences between the way each manufacturer packages and sells add-on products that I will identify as we progress through this comparison. Here they all are side by side so that you can get a feel for how they stack up against each other in terms of sizing. The products produced by both of these companies do on the face of things look very similar, but there are key differences as you will see. Let's take a look at each of these products now, and I'll go through the features. So in no particular order, let us begin. Here is the 55 litre version of the Firmzilla Conical. This is also available as a 27 litre vessel. It is suitable for pressure and regular fermentations, and can be used as a unitank, meaning that you can ferment and serve beer from the same vessel. This version also has a bottom valve with a connecting and removable 1 litre container at the bottom, so that you can use this to dump trub and introduce things like dry hops into the beer. Within the Firmzilla range of units, this is the It Does Everything model. I have made a review of the 27 litre unit previously, so check that out if you have not already. Keg King have a version of the Fermentosaurus that is a direct competitor to this product. I will explain the differences later. It would be very fair to say that the Firmzilla Flat Bottom is the most basic product in this lineup, so essentially the most cut down version. This is available in one size only, 30 litres. It is not suited to pressure fermentation and thus cannot be used as a unitank. It is, however, suitable for regular fermentations. It does not come supplied with a stand either as the flat bottom provides a suitable base. If you are looking for a no-frills fermenter where you can see what is going on inside without having to open it up, then this is potentially a good choice for you, and at a very reduced price point compared to the others in this lineup in the majority of markets. The Firmzilla All-Rounder is essentially a Firmzilla without the bottom valve and container. This is available in both 30 litres and 60 litre sizes. Unlike the flat bottom, it does come with a stand and it is suitable for pressure fermentations as well as being a unitank. Again, a pressure kit will need to be purchased separately for unitank and pressure functionality. Because there is no valve or container, you cannot dump the trub though, so for some people's taste, this will potentially limit the shelf life of the beer inside. However, I have met people who for their taste have found this is a non-issue. I guess you will not know until you try it though. Excuse the look of this one, I had recently cleaned it inside. This Fermentosaurus Snubnose is essentially similar in ways to the Firmzilla All-Rounder. It is available in just 35 litre form though. Just like the All-Rounder, it does not feature a dump valve or bottom container, so there is that trub situation as mentioned before. You can ferment with pressure and use it as a unit tank as standard though, but to use it for regular fermentations you may need to purchase a totally different lid kit. More on this later. Also made by Keg King is the Fermenter King Junior. This is a keg shaped 20 litre vessel and it is just sold in this size. Again you can ferment under pressure by standard and the same conditions stand as mentioned previously about unitank and regular fermentation use. I have put the dimensions of this on screen for those that are interested. The width is the base measurement and the height is to the top of the posts on the actual product with nothing attached. This size makes it actually larger than a standard corny keg. Two of these will fit into average industry size kegerators, but your converted fridge may be different of course. 
At the time of making this video, this was actually not being sold in Scandinavia or Europe for that matter that I could find, and this one was sent to me from Australia. Let us now look at the differences in these fermentation products between these two companies. The first thing that is apparent is that the Kegland Firmzilla products have a far larger top opening compared to the products offered by Keg King. This may have an effect on how you clean your fermenter and also how you add things to the fermenter during fermentation like dry hops. But of course the dry hop size will depend on which model that you go for from either range. Naturally this also has an effect on the lid design itself. Both companies have standard lid designs that feature in all of their related products. The Firmzilla design allows for different attachments to be screwed onto the lid in two areas shown on screen. In this example you see the airlock on the left and a ball lock post on the right. You can configure these as you need them, meaning that you can alternate from corny post to an airlock addition or blank off the area entirely. The Firmzilla's airlock addition supports a range of airlock sizes and is standard kit when you buy a Firmzilla product. However, the standard keg king lid is fixed and as such what you see is what you get. You might think that the PRV can be removed and airlocks put in place, but in the cases I tried this it simply does not work, and a different type of lid needs to be purchased should you wish to use the product with regular fermentation. Here is the Keg King regular fermentation lid package shown on screen now. This needs to be bought separately. This is in part a difference in what is included by standard, so let's also look at the flip side of this too. The flip side of this is that Keg King products are supplied as standard with pressure fermentation and unitank functionality, whereas on Kegland's Firmzilla range by standard this is not the case, and pressure kits are sold separately. However, I do note that some retailers worldwide bundle all of this together for a package price. For pricing of these products and packages, please check your local homebrew store first, but it is fair to say that where you are in the world will affect the price, and that you can only judge the full cost and value of the features of any of these competing systems on your own needs and your own market. Another key difference between these two manufacturers is the bottom container that is supplied with the relevant systems. Here is the container supplied by Kegland. It is one litre in capacity and its mouth area is as wide as the container itself. Like the Ketlan lid, it has two areas where you can screw on accessories. In the configuration you see here, this allows the user to CO2 purge the container, which is very useful when adding dry hops to minimise exposure to oxygen. The bottom container from King Keg is very different. It is 500 millilitres, half the size of Kegland's version. It is also a more basic form with a much smaller opening size, following more of a bottle design with no attachment areas. Both manufacturers offer extra bottles for sale and some will use them for bottom harvested yeast within a fridge. The final key area of difference that needs to be highlighted is the bottom valve systems offered by these two manufacturers. The Keg King version shown here first has a much smaller opening size and a different kind of connection to the bottom valve operation. Shown here is the much larger valve offered by Kegland. It has a long lever style of control and you can feel when it is closed. So there you have it, a comparison without opinion, just the bare facts on features and differences. If you are in the market for a new vessel, then I hope this helps you decide if any of these suit your needs and preferences. Please feel free to let me know what you thought of this video or the products themselves within the comments section of YouTube. If you are feeling social, then please feel free to apply to join this channel's Facebook group via the link shown on screen. We have a busy, friendly group where many have found home these days. I do my very best to look at all posts, but also have a great moderation team and membership that is like-minded in helping and discussing brewing-related topics. This now brings this video to a close. If you have any questions, then please let me know via YouTube or Facebook. I do hope that you found this video to be useful, interesting and enjoyable. If appropriate, then please like this video on YouTube, and if you've not done so already, then please subscribe. I regularly post new content. Happy brewing!